the thing with the equal sign is this right i meet a lot of people that say you know they want equality in the world they want sustainability in the world they 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 believe the world is unjust they they, they talk about a lot of, lot of social issues a lot of economic issues a lot of political issues and all that jazz right but they don't really understand that what they're talking about what the base of what it is they're talking about is mathematics because as soon as they start talking about equality and system sustainability and all that jazz they're talking about the equal sign right they're talking about this symbol right here they're saying they want equality this side equal this side they want sustainability this side equals this side right that's what they're talking about sustainability means what you're taking out of the earth you're putting at least as much back into the earth right sustaining right they're talking about maintaining a budget they're talking about the equal sign right they want to be economically independent they're talking about the equal sign how much you earn should be at least right equivalent to how much you spend as soon as you start spending more than you earn you're in the negative you're not financially independent you're in debt right so anyone talking about financial independence they're they're really talking about the equal sign anyone talking about the environment sustainability they're talking about the equal sign anyone that's talking about social justice is really supposed to be talking about the equal sign but unfortunately what i find is a lot of people are illiterate in the language of mathematics so everything that they're talking about on this level has a limit to where they can take it because they don't understand that you need to quantify these things to really have that stuff in your life right now for us in the last couple of streams math streams anyway we talked about how to deal with addition subtraction multiplication and division right once we learn how to do these four simple operations and with these four simple operations you can do almost anything you want in mathematics right at least in the real world might maybe not theoretical mathematics but anything that you want to apply to your life as long as you know how to add, subtract, multiply, and divide, and move around the equal sign, right? As long as you know how to do this, you can use mathematics to do almost anything you want. So let me explain to you what it is when we say we want to move around the equal sign. Check this out, all right? Let's say we have an expression or an equation that says x is equal to five, right? That's intuitive. That basically says whatever your x is, x is equal to five, okay? And the units here are irrelevant. When we're talking about mathematics, just the language of mathematics, the syntax of the language of mathematics, units do not matter. This could be x, x is how many comic books i'm going to buy this week is equal to five comic books so comic books would be my units right comic books x could be how many cookies i've eaten i ate yesterday and probably more than five but let's say five i'm down to two <laughs> right i made two trades so five could be cookies okay five could be a comic book that i'm buying costs five dollars it could be money it could be time in seconds right and time couldn't be it's sort of a generic unit you would have to specify is it seconds is it minutes is it hours is it years right and different different places where you apply your mathematics may use different 
units more often than others, right? So for example, if you're in finances, you're probably using, or you're trying to do personal finance economics, you're probably using years, not hours. You don't look at your investments on an hourly basis. If you're looking at them on an hourly basis, you're gambling, right? Minutes, gambling. Seconds, gambling, right? So the units really define where you are, where you're applying them, right? But when you're trying to learn mathematics, you don't care about the units, right? The units come into play when you're delving, when you're taking mathematics and using it in a system, right? Is it personal finance? Is it physics? Is it electrodynamics? Is it biology? Is it food? Is it shopping? Is it personal finance, investing? Whatever it is, right? So consider that when you're learning mathematics, forget about trying to apply the mathematics right away if you don't know how the syntax works, how the language of mathematics works. First, learn how the language of mathematics works, right? And it's just basically intuitive rules. And then you can apply the mathematics in different places, right? So for example, let's assume we didn't have x equals 5. Let's assume we had this. x plus 2 is equal to 5, right? So we take this guy out. So we say x plus 2 is equal to 5. Well, for us, when we're trying to do mathematics, if we have an equal sign, and the equal sign kicks us up into another realm, right? All of a sudden, the equal sign allows us to look at different systems and try to understand different systems, right? That's the power of the equal sign. The equal sign gives us solutions to problems, right? Or questions that we have. So when you're dealing with an equal sign, if you're trying to solve something, right? Solve for x. And the x would be your unknown. Okay, slick mic. My favorite question always used to be exponential exponentials graphing the growth of bacteria. Yeah, I don't know why, but the correlation between inputs and outputs and systems always satisfied me. Yeah, exponentials is amazing, and it's no longer only the best example is no longer well the best example is still bacteria growth or exponential decay re, radioactive decay it's also in economics right now or our current economic system because there's a lot of exponential growth going on <laughs> right we've talked about this stuff right so whenever you're trying to solve an equation right because this is solving for x solving equation the way you should think about it is your x is your unknown, right? Let's do this in blue. Let's do this in blue. Think of x is equal to unknown, right? So your unknown is what you're trying to find, right? X marks the spot. So when you're trying to solve for x, when you're trying to solve for an equation, you're trying to get the variable by itself, right? Solve for x means means get the variable by itself, right? That's what that means. Solve for x means get the variable by itself. And by the way, some people have a hard time understanding what variable means. Okay, variable means find what the unknown is that can vary, right? Variable is something that can vary. That's it. And in mathematics, usually, preliminary mathematics anyway, we use letters of the alphabet for the unknown, for the variable. In this case, our variable is x, right? So solve for x means get the variable or get x by itself. That's what solving the equation means, right? Get the variable by itself or get a specific variable by itself, right? So what do we need to do? We need to undo what's being done to it. So undo how do, you, how do you do this? How? How do you do this? How do you do this? Do you do this? The answer? 
undo what's being done to x or the variable right so let's stay consistent so undo what's being done to the to the variable the variable in this case for us is x so undo what's being done to the variable and here is the thing here's a beautiful thing about mathematics mathematics is very unique in our lives really because for almost almost everything that you can do in math you could undo it in math right so in mathematics almost always whatever you're looking at has an opposite right so the opposite of addition is subtraction the opposite of multiplication is division right those are the four that we're talking about right now the opposite of exponential powers where things are growing are radicals or roots which are really the denominator and exponential but we'll get into that stuff right and we have multiple times through the math videos hundreds of math videos we've created on the sensor tube so for us to get x by itself we have to undo what's being done to the x to get it by itself right and there's an order of operations here right don't forget the order of operations don't let's put a little note 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 don't forget oops for get the order of operations and what are we talking about with the order of operations bed mass or pet mass or depending on where you are right we're talking about bed mass right brackets exponents division multiplication addition subtraction right now bed mass if you're simplifying expressions which we just we learned how to add subtract multiply and divide we didn't go into simplifying we just went into straight into solving equations simplifying will make sense we'll come back to it okay but let's deal with the equal sign right now so if you're simplifying expressions you go this way if you're solving for equations you go the other way solving right you take care of addition and subtraction first and then multiplication and division and then exponents and then whatever is in the brackets okay in our case we have this thing here right we want to solve for x and get x by itself well what's being done to the x we're adding to to x right so to get x by itself we have to subtract 2 from this side right so if we have x plus 2 is equal to 5 to get rid of this 2 we're going to subtract 2 right now what is the equal sign mean the equal sign means this it means it's a teeter-totter and you always have to keep it equal balance and if you do something on one side you got to do it to the other side that's what the equal sign means it means this side is equal to this side this side has to remain equal to this side so if there's anything you're doing to this side you have to do it to the other side right so for us if we're subtracting two from this side then we have to subtract two from this side we have no choice we have to keep the teeter-totter balanced if we're adding something here then we need to add something on this side right how do I put this up here? Oh my God, it's going to fall. <laughs> here, we'll do it this way. Here's a teeter-totter. If I add a pen on this side, I got to add an equal pen on this side, right? It's a different color, so that's not going to work. Maybe the color weights are different. Two reds, they have to balance. If I don't, if you, if, if I have my teeter-totter, and if I add a pen on this side, then this side is going to go down. This side is going to go up. That's not 
the definition of an equal sign definition of equal sign says no if you're starting off with two things that are equal right two sides that are equal if you add something on this side you got to add it to this side that's the concept right so if we subtract two from this side we got to subtract two from that side and what what do we do we go x plus two minus two well positive two and negative two right two minus two they kill each other boink, boink. so what do we have left on this side we just have x left on this side five minus two is three three when we get to the end we got our answer x equals three we just solved for x we solved for our unknown we isolated the variable get the variable by itself we isolated the variable cancellation law of a group cancellation law of a group slick make my favorite question oh yeah let's stop. all right does that make sense so let's expand on this let's look at more complicated equations or do a couple of more samples of this right and we'll talk we'll incorporate bed mass in there as well because bed mass this thing here when you're trying to simplify means simplify one side if you can and simplify the other side if you can before you start moving things around or isolating the variable and by the way gang thank you for the follows uh, uh appreciate them i'm sorry if i don't recognize them or uh, announce them right away just because i don't want to lose the train of thought here right so let's do more complicated stuff okay and if you want to take notes by the way gang all you got to do is just take screenshots of this right and then you can just have that as a note so let's do this we solve for x when it's x plus 2 is equal to 5. So the question is, and this is what the question will be, solve for x. Solve for x. Now I've seen a lot of schools try to make it more exciting for kids to do mathematics. And what they do is change the x to y. Solve for y or solve for s or solve for w or solve for... I think that's fine and dandy because they're trying to get the point across that a variable could be any letter right for me it's it's ridiculous to try to change the letters to try to make it more exciting for kids to be able to solve equations or do algebra it doesn't even have to be a letter it doesn't even have to be a letter right solve for a triangle solve for the triangle solve for the triangle solve solve for the dude right get the dude by itself whatever it is right for me it's better to add the variation in the questions based on the difficulty of the question instead of the phrasing of the question so i like working with x because to me x marks the spot right so let's do this one x plus 7 is equal to 4 right so we want to get x by itself so undo what's being done to the x what's being done to the x is 7 is being added to the x so you subtract 7 from here you subtract 7 from here 7 kills 7 line up the equal sign on this side you have x by itself 4 minus 7 is negative 3 right nice putin roaster x equals negative three i always like the smiley face <laughs> solve for the smiley face solve for the happy dude right now for me i've mentioned this before a few times mathematicians are lazy right especially when they're doing mathematics for me i like things visual and mathematicians are in general very visual right so when i write down x plus seven is equal to four instead of writing minus seven on this side and minus seven on this side i think about the adding and subtracting as movements so i grab a positive seven bring it over and whenever you jump over an equal sign the sign changes right so positive seven when it goes over to the other side becomes a negative seven so positive seven has moved the only thing we have on this side is x 
and 4 minus 7 is negative 3. Right? Here, here's another one. X minus 4 is equal to 3. Well, we've got to get X by itself. This is negative 4. Borno full series. Series. Isis. 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 Series. <laughs> Borno, how are you doing? Welcome to another live stream. So you can think about it two ways. You can go plus 4 on this side, plus 4 on this side, so x is equal to 7. Or you can think about it this way. Here, we'll do the same thing here. x minus 4 is equal to 3. I want to move the 4. Plus 4, change the size. Left on this side is x, and this is 7. Okay. Up to you which one you guys want to use. I like doing this. Okay. Easy? Easy. Let's do more variations the question is still solve for x right how about we do this are we on number four let's say number four x plus three minus four is equal to seven plus two well we have the equal sign here we've got things on this side and things on that side now before you start solving for variable solving for x isolating a variable you did it that fast yeah oh it does too i have to think about it <laughs> do you stream on uh on any other platform i don't stream on any other platform but i upload the videos to sensor tube most of the videos to sensor tube less and less recently sensor tube bit shoot and rumble everything goes to so bit shoot and rumble i upload everything and we upload audios uh, we don't have visuals to SoundCloud as podcast. Ronnie, how are you doing? Ronnie 90. Hello, hello. Right? So when you're trying to solve for X, isolate the variable. I always love math tutoring. Nice. Me too. Right? If you're trying to get X by itself, instead of, I mean, theoretically, this is, you could do this. What's being done to the X here? Well, 3 is being added to X, and then you're subtracting 4. So you could do it in a weird way, not a weird way, but a long way and go, okay, I'm going to grab the negative four, bring it over. It becomes positive four. I'm going to grab the positive three, bring it over. It becomes negative three because we're jumping over the equal sign, right? What we have left on this side is just X and this we just end up doing seven plus two is nine plus four is 13 minus three is 10. Putin roaster got it 10 right now that's extra work right grab everything grab each one individually and bring them over right well how about doing it this way and it's faster x plus 3 minus 4 7 plus 2 same question right and not only is it faster it creates less errors right so whenever you're trying to solve for an equation equal sign line up your equal sign really mathematics is very visual you want to keep everything tight symmetrical keep it clean do your work properly i've said this before right if you're going to write the word or sentence i like apples right i like apples right period or if you want to amplify it i like apples right that's in a sentence, my scrawny type of writing, right? Hopefully you can read that. You don't go and say, I like apples. You don't write it like that. You could try to decipher it that way. It could be a game. Here's a puzzle. What did we say, right? But the point of mathematics is not to make things more difficult right is to solve equations simplify things the point of languages is to get your point across right you could use languages to create complicated puzzles but you want to get your idea across right mano 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 steel 99 hello hello twist how are you doing how are you doing today doing good i popped a little cookie all right so Keep that in mind. 
but keep your work tight that's one of the things I try to emphasize with a lot of my students right so if we're trying to isolate the X instead of moving these guys individually over first what we're gonna do is simplify each side as much as we can first that's where bed mass kicks in right so bed mass if you're doing this mass if you're doing this when you're simplifying you go this way and if you're going to simplify each side first do brackets first do we have any brackets no exponents no division no multiplication no addition and subtraction yes we do because multiplication and division have the same weight addition and subtraction have the same way doesn't make a difference which way you do them okay so we're going to do our addition and subtraction first well over here let's simplify this well let's do this one first that's step before this one right seven plus two is nine cool okay three this is positive three remember the mantra sign in front of the number always goes with the number so this isn't just a regular three it's a positive three it's not negative and this isn't just a four it's a negative four right so positive three minus four right is negative one so we got x minus one right we added one more level of doing the work to simplify at one level for us to be able to move this thing and only move one thing right we're keeping track of less things we're com compartmentalizing the work right on this side now we move the negative one over it becomes positive one we have x left and nine plus one is ten right and this part is this way we're doing solving okay so when you're solving you deal with the subtraction and addition first and then multiplication and division and then exponents and then brackets well in here we had the addition subtraction we took care of that we ended up with the answer we got none of the other ones we're done right let's do more of these okay we're gonna build it up all the way to multiplying dividing and i'm not going to introduce any exponents yet but we'll get into the brackets okay now take a look what if you have more complicated i have a question for you for sure twist what's the question before we're gonna whiteboard we've got space here let's do it if it's math math related if it's not post your question and I'll do math and try to answer the question. I'm gonna have a sip of tea while we wait for the question. Let's see what it's about. What I'm eating? Cookies. <laughs> I'm gonna pop a cookie while we wait. One more cookie. Feed your brain. How would you explain it to someone who solved that for x equals 2 what do you mean I had this issue while tutoring my niece and I couldn't explain it to her well enough for her to grasp it in what way uh, to a sex so if I give you anything and she gets the wrong answer and puts down x equals 2 or the answer is x equals 2 and you have to explain to them what that means yeah let's see All right. essentially you want your right hand side equals left hand side yeah right hand side equals left hand side. so you had x plus three okay sure let me write that down then. x plus three minus four 
So we have x plus 3 minus 4 is equal to 7 plus 2. x plus 3 minus 4 is equal to 7 plus 2. So the way we did it, when x minus 1 is equal to 9, grab the 1 over plus 1, so x is equal to 10. So she ends up doing it and she gets x is equal to 2. And this probably does not understand the x. So for this, she would do the work and get x equals 2. And she, you want to explain to her why that's wrong? Ronnie, Ronnie says this, I never liked the whole left-hand side, right-hand side. The position of those numbers can be anywhere and the X would be solved fine. Sure, but every, every, every line when you're solving for something, every line is equivalent to the previous line, right? So this line and this line are the same line and the same line. So all of these are the same, right? I just woke up. But I see where she messed up. <laughs> she did on both sides. Yeah, I was. I'm. I'm assuming where she messed up was when she did this. She would have added this thought that this was seven, right? So she would have done this, and then the seven would have killed the seven. So x plus seven is equal to seven plus two. She would have missed read this thing as a negative put a seven and then brought this guy over minus seven and then you get seven kills seven so you get two if she did that right and that's the one thing uh it's extremely important it's extremely important to be a to be able to see a student's work as someone as an educator right that's one of the reasons centralized education is so horrendous because a lot of it has to do with, uh, what do you call it? Uh, yes and no, or fill in the blanks, or uh, what do you call it? Uh, uh, multiple choice questions, right? So the only feedback a student can ever get is wrong or right, right? And the educator in general is not gonna be looking at the student's work because all they do is they hand in their multiple choice little sheet thing and they scan right so there's no constructive feedback to students which is just one of the reasons centralized education is just so horrendous okay i haven't done simple math in years my last math class was calculus three so she threw me for a loop yeah teaching like gang trying to teach simple mathematics just the basics of mathematics up is a difficult thing to do okay sometimes more difficult than the more complicated stuff because the more complicated stuff the person you're talking to has a rudimentary understanding of the language of mathematics when you're trying to build it from the base up there is no conceptual understanding of the language of mathematics so it becomes difficult it requires patience right had to look at it a little uh, closer yeah yeah i hope that i hope that works right so if we're going to get into more complicated stuff, right here, x minus 3 plus 2 minus 1 plus 4 is equal to 7 plus 7 minus 2, right? You could do any adding and subtracting in here, right? What do we have? 4, 5, this is number 6. Line up your equal sign, combine like terms here, 7 plus 7 is 14, minus 2 is 12 negative three and you can you can what you can do is combine things i <laughs> put most we got a 10 already I haven't done it yet <laughs> we got 10 again now <laughs> so what you can do is instead of doing all the operations in one go if you notice the pattern you got 14 oh somebody's wrong if you if you notice a pattern you can start eliminating things simplifying things so take a look at this thing you got negative three and negative one so minus three and minus one you can think of as negative three and negative one well 
negative 3 minus 1 is negative 4, plus 4 is 0. The negative 4 and 4 kill each other, right? So this, this, and this are gone. You got a 2 left, right? Now you can write this here, or you could have done the simplification here and did brought it over here, right? I'm just going to do it over here instead of doing it here. So you see how it works instead of combining multiple operations in one shot, right? Okay. So we got x plus 2 here, and then bring that over, you get this, you get x equals 10, and that's your answer, right? Student, why do numbers kill each other? They're at war. They cancel each other out. I know. I say kill. Maybe I, I should be saying cancel, but I, I just math like shorter word, less <laughs> less letters <laughs> when we have null. <laughs> right? And by the way, uh, this may uh, uh, touch on Graham's sort of question. Uh, what was it called? Public something. But I do almost anything. To teach kids mathematics right and I found where you say negative 3 and negative 1 kill 4 when you say they kill each other kids tend to like that more than cancel each other out so I have students that sometimes they're not really paying attention and they're not into it they like it when we start killing numbers so they pay attention and learn the process even though the word killing is not the best thing to use it's a means to teach mathematics. I'm okay with that. Okay. So that's how we deal with adding and subtracting, right? Let's look at multiplication. Let's do something like this. Let's do 2x is equal to 8, right? Rose and Putin, as soon as I wrote it down, I knew you knew what that was, right? So whenever you have a number in front of a variable, a number in front of an x, right? That means multiplication. So this really means this really means 2 times x. But we're not going to mathematicians are lazy. We're not going to include that, right? So <laughs> so is the police. We should tell the students getting an a means you killed the course <laughs> maybe. <laughs> well, we we do have something like that. You know, when in sports you do, you say, oh, he killed it, or they killed it, right? Or musicians, oh, man, they went on stage, they're set, just, they just killed it, right? It is used. Uh -huh. I, would, uh, I would be the kin of kid who pay more attention, kind of kid who pay more attention if you, if you kill numbers, yeah. So equals is the police. Equality. Hi, um, Chicho, by the way. Das, 89, how are you doing? So over here, this is multiplication, right? 2 times x is equal to 8. What's the opposite of multiplication? What's the opposite of multiplication? Division. So to get x by itself, right? Divide this side by 2. And the equal sign says if you do something on one side, you got to do it to the other side. You divide this side by 2. Line up your equal sign. 2 kills 2. You got x on this side. 8 divided by 2 is 4. Right? So what did we do? We didn't have any addition subtraction to deal with. So we just went into multiplication and division and dealt with that. Right? Easy peasy. Okay. Let's do some more examples. That was number seven. Let's do number eight. Good. Thank you. Cleaning the inside of my gaming console while watching you. How are you doing? Good. Thank you. Eating cookies, doing mathematics. Life is sweet. And cleaning a console. Which console? Which console are you? I haven't cleaned a console forever. Man, I think last time I cleaned the console was a uh probably a sega system or something <laughs> or nes nes probably nes or n64 n64 is probably the last time i cleaned the console n64 for sure n64 right so what if we had the following right x over 2 is equal to 8. Right? well this means division 
right x divided by 2 is equal to 8 what's the opposite of division gaming computer not my console oh a gaming computer okay I gig my computer I cleaned like last year man was it ever dirty yikes I loaded up pictures I would not try that afraid of uh, bronking it x equals 16 did you get it yeah computer uh, you need to clean every now and then right. so the opposite of division is multiplication so we multiply this side by two equal sign line it up and if you do something on one side you got to do it to the other side eight times two is 16 putin roaster got it and when you're multiplying fractions right x over two times two that's just two over one anything from the top can kill anything from the bottom two kills two you got x left over right the other way you can think about this is this x over two times two this equals two x over two and the twos kill each other right but i'm just killing the fractions right breaking it sorry i'm french so i sometimes make english <laughs> no worries <laughs> bronking it <laughs> i went bronking it that's a good word for breaking it too right so that makes sense right easy well let's do one that's a little bit more complicated what if we had 2x plus 5 is equal to 8 huh well are we solving or simplifying do we have any simplifying to do on this side we can't combine 2x and 5 it just doesn't work right this doesn't have an x and this is has a variable 1.5 you got it is 1.5 here's an 8 right so if we're solving there's no simplifying to do here if we're solving we do subtraction addition first we can't add or subtract there's nothing to add and subtract here and then we deal oh sorry if we're solving we got an addition here we've got to deal with right so simplifying we're going this way solve we're going this way so we're going to grab this guy and bring it over so we're dealing with subtraction and addition first this becomes minus 5 8 minus 5 is 3 over here we got 2x now what we got to do is deal with the multiplication division and we've got a multiplication so divide by 2 divide by 2 so x is equal to 3 over 2 which is 1.5 as Putin Roaster says right let's do a couple more which were more complicated okay that was number 9 let's do number 10 number 10 let's go 2x plus 5 minus 3 plus 4x is equal to 8 plus 2 right whoa much longer i sort of start off simple and i kick things up to harder first mine cc how are you doing welcome to our live stream put next did you figure it out yet so do the simplifying first either side four over three cool you're you're our double checker make sure making sure we do it right so you're going to simplify each side first brackets so you're going to simplify this side simplify that side line up your equal sign brackets exponents no we've got division multiplication no we've got addition subtractions yep eight plus two is ten and then we got 2x plus 4x combine your like terms right 2x plus 4x is 6x and then you got positive 5 minus 3 that becomes positive 2 right so we took care of simplifying each side first there's nothing else to simplify here nothing to simplify here we go into solving we go this way take care of addition subtraction first well there's an addition here let's move it over it becomes minus 8 minus 2 is 8. Oh, sorry, 10 minus 2 is 8, and we've got 6x left, left here. No more adding, subtracting. Then we've got division multiplication. Divide this side by 6, divide this side by 6. So x is equal to 8 over 6, but you can simplify that because 2 goes into both of them. So let me write down 8 over 6, and let's do this over here. We've done a lot of videos on these. I haven't done it in this live stream in this order first because I wanted to get into the equal sign right away. Okay, but do this. Eight. Break down eight, eight into its prime factors. 
2 times 4, 2 times 2. 6. Break down 6 into its prime factors. 2 times 3. So this equation is really 8 over 6 is really 2 times 2 times 2 divided by 2 times 3. And anything divided by itself, they kill each other, right? So this is a multiplication between all these. So 2 kills 2. Nothing else simplifies. So 2 times 2 is 4. And in the bottom, you got a 3. So it's 4 over 3. That's the long way of doing that, right? Once you do 2 or 3 of these, then you know the rest. The flow is, it is, right? So 4 over 3, we've got double confirmation. Mine C. So let's do more complicated. Okay. Let's add a bracket in there. Let's add a bracket in there. 2, 3x minus 1 is equal to 4 plus 7. Okay. So what are we going to do? We're going to simplify first, right? Because we can. We can simplify this side. We can simplify this side. Right? So we're going to deal with brackets first. Do we have brackets? Yes, we do. What does a number in front of brackets mean? It means the number in front multiplies. And did you do it already? It's Speedy Gonzalez. So the 2 multiplies here and multiplies here. Line up your equal sign. So 2 times 3x is 6x. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. So we have no more brackets. No brackets there. Exponents, no division, multiplication, no. We've got addition, subtraction. Yep. 4 plus 7 is 11 cool we got nothing else no simplifying to do so we're going to solve for it we're going to go into solving so we finished the simplifying we came all the way to here and now we're going to go into solving right so we came to simplifying and now we're going into solving okay solving we're going to deal with addition subtraction oh we got a subtraction bring it over becomes addition so you got 13 on this side on this side you got 6x Oh, Putin next. Did you do? Oh, you did it wrong at first. Oh, that's where speed gets you. Speed kills you. <laughs> right? So now we got to get x by itself. This is 6 times x. So divide by 6 is 13 over 6. And this doesn't simplify anymore. Right? Speed kills. Okay. Easy? Easy. Right? undo what's being done to the x what's being done to the x is being multiplied by three one is being subtracted while the whole thing is being multiplied by two well if we're gonna undo what's being done to it we have to go with solving right or sorry sim we did simplifying first and then we're down to here undo what's being done you do the solving you get the gist right mind c memorize multiplication table is the most difficult thing is it Multiplication table should be easy to memorize because there's a pattern to it. You don't have to know the whole table. You just have to know half the table and that half the table you just generate. You generate it enough, you know the words. Like, did you have to memorize the alphabet? Yeah, at some point we memorized A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z. Right? At some point we had to memorize it. But once you end up using it, a lot it's just part of your dialogue right it's difficult after 12 it's difficult i don't memorize after 12 i just do well more so more so who came up with the ordering of alphabet i don't know i don't know my guess would be linguists right my guess would be linguists so let's do one more okay what number was that 10 11 let's do number 11 what are we going to add well let's do this i'm going to make it more difficult we're going to take a huge step forward right so number 11 2 x minus 1 divided by 5 plus 3 let's go minus minus 3 times 2x plus 4 is equal to 4x minus 1 all of it divided by 2 and I'm doing this because I want to show you the the rhythm of this, right? Now, this is more difficult than what we should be able to do. I wouldn't usually kick it up to this level, but I want to just 
end this section with this and then get into the chat and see uh, if we want to go anywhere else with this right so there's a rhythm in this right you could deal with the brackets first if you want or whenever I see this personally when I see fractions I multiply the whole equation by the common denominator which I haven't shown you guys this in this math session but we've done a lot of this stuff previously in the previous math videos we've done right multiply the whole equation by the common denominator the common denominator is 10 what's the common denominator between 5 and 2 10 so you multiply everything by 10 all the terms there's three terms here one term two terms three terms so 10 multiplies this multiplies this multiplies this Putnar, did you get it did you get a twist let's check it out so the reason we're going to multiply by 10 is because the denominator dies the 10 kills the 2 right 2 goes into 10 five times 5 now multiplies the top this side take a look at this thing I'm going to do this thing on the side so 4x minus 1 divided by 2 times 10 that's 10 over 1 2 goes into 10 5 times so it's really just 5 multiplying this and that so this becomes 20x minus 5 okay twist you say negative 119 over 76 eh? let's check it out over here 10 multiplies this it becomes 30 times 2x plus 4 the 10 doesn't multiply the inside because this is one term it just multiplies what's on the outside of the bracket okay let me make this so it looks better this one 2 bracket x minus 1 times 5 the 5 knocks the 10 down to 2 so it's just 2 multiplying this so this becomes 4 on the outside x minus 1 now we got more simplifying to do we're going to deal with the brackets first line up your equal sign 4 multiplies in negative 30 multiplies in so this is 4x minus 4 minus 60x minus 120 this is 20x minus 5. we're still in the simplifying phase we're going to simplify each side first line up your equal sign combine your like terms okay 4x minus 60x is negative 56x negative 4 minus 120 is negative 124 we got 20x minus 5. now when you're trying to solve for x it means you need to get all the x's to one side and have the result being x equals something right well we have x's on this side we've got x's on this side and we've got a number on this side and a number on this side so what i'm going to do is i'm going to grab this 20x bring it over it becomes minus 20x i'm going to grab this negative 124 bring it over it becomes plus 124. line up your equal sign negative 56x minus 20x is negative 76x negative 76x 124 minus 5 is 119 right twist you got it correct very good <laughs> my my c says i'm slow that's okay that's okay this is not about speed by the way right that's one of the other reasons centralized education is so horrendous they put people under the clock get it done get it done get it done fast well then what why are you speeding things up the first thing they teach you when you learn how to drive is speed kills well if speed is so dangerous that it kills why are they forcing students to react rapidly crazy right i do mine quite differently teacher do you i use fractions the whole way use fractions the whole way cool 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 i don't like memorizing or doing quickly i prefer intuition yeah you sacrifice accuracy for the sake of speed you sacrifice accuracy for the sake of speed which is well speed kills right and then you divide by negative 76 you divide by negative 76 so x is equal to negative 119 over 76 
and that is your answer and honestly gang if you're doing mathematics in school when you're doing problems when you get to the end circle your answer your teacher will thank you for it your markers will thank you for it that way they don't have to decipher your high look glyphics to find out what the answer is they automatically see it it makes their job easier make their job easier and gang thank you for the follows uh, appreciate the support okay that's basically sort of a intro to solving for X dealing with the equal sign 